Okay, hello again. Uh, it's, there's, it gets warmer and warmer the more you're in here, and so I'm losing clothing. This is where I'm going to stop, though. Processing t-shirt. Okay, hello again. Here we are. Um, okay, so this video, I want to talk about probability. Really basic, really simple topic. This is not some elaborate five-minute video about complex statistics. We really want to just think about probability in a very basic way. I should say something kind of about this which is that I, I, I forgot in my original video, and someday when I go back and remake all these to be perfect, I will get this right, that one of the things about this material is we aren't looking for um, scientific accuracy. We're not, uh, we're not here to um, you know, measure perfectly and recreate with, with amazing realism the exact simulated representation of what happens in nature on the screen. I have a screen over there that I have to turn off because I keep looking at it. Okay, right? That's not what we're here to do. We are here to, have, to create the feeling of nature in our programs. Sometimes that means, hey, look at the science, understand the science, write the science into our code. Sometimes it means blend some weird looking images we made in Photoshop together to kind of create the feeling of nature. I think probability and randomness is a place where we're kind of walking that line a little bit. Um, we can use randomness to sort of have this accidental uh, representation of nature. In many ways, lots of things in nature are random, but are they purely random? Do they have a pattern? Do they follow Gaussian distributions of random numbers? Should we use this sort of strange function that produces a smooth randomness, like it's purling noise? I want to look at all these topics. But we're going to just start with probability. Now, let's go over here and visit. Over there, we're going to visit our random walker. It's been running for quite a while, and we can see that it's creating this kind of nice random pattern, this kind of, uh, uh, that's how I would describe it, um, and it's working out quite nicely. So what is the thing, what, how does this random walker relate to probability? <laughs> okay, now we see over here, this is, this is a set of options that a random walker at any moment will, uh, can choose from. It can go to the right, to the top, to the left, or to the bottom with equal probability. A 25, one out of four chance of moving to the right, a one out of four chance of moving to the top, left and bottom, that's a 25% chance each. And in fact, when we use um, the random function in processing, for example, if we want to pick a random number, a random integer, and I think we did this in our code, this will give us a 0, 1, 2, or 3 we have an equal probability of picking any one of those. A 25% chance of 0, 25% of 1, 2, 3. So this is where we start to realize, hmm, is this how nature works? For example, what if we wanted to pick uh, random heights? We're going to create a population of meerkats and we're going to give them all a random height. Now I don't really know anything about meerkats, so that's probably a bad example to pick. But I have a guess. And we'll, the meerkat experts will weigh in in the interactive commenting system we have below, which I don't know if it exists, and tell me about this, whether or not I'm right or not. Okay, w let's say we could pick meerkats with a height of 0, 1, 2, or 3. Well, a height of 0 also doesn't make any sense, but just go with this. It's more likely that most of the meerkats, meerkats all have a height of around 1.5, right? Somewhere in the middle there, the mean, right? Maybe there are ra very rarely some outliers that are very tall or very short. And perhaps the meerkats follow this kind of bell curve, a Gaussian distribution, a normal distribution of, of, of numbers, of heights. And so I kind of, that's going to be, in the, stay tuned. This is coming soon in the next video for you. We're going to talk more about how this works. And we're going to actually look at doing a Gaussian distribution of random numbers in processing. But before we get there, let's just think of some simpler ways we might do this. What if, for example, we want to adjust these probabilities? What if we wanted to say that um, our uh, random walker has actually a 50% chance of moving to the right, and it has a 20% chance of moving to the left, a 15% chance of moving up, and a 15% chance of moving down? These could, I hope that adds up to 100. It does. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. How could we implement something like this in processing? We need to figure out how to have custom distributions of random numbers. Now, um, this computer over here went to sleep, which means I'm standing in front of nothing. Oh, it came back online. This program down here is going to give us a clue. 
if you look at it, this is a particle system. It's, it's an example that's coming up in uh, chapter, I don't know, chapter, week, lesson, video, whatever, in the particle system section, which is chapter four if you're following along in the Nature of Code book. Notice how often it's making a particle. Definitely not every frame, and certainly not with regularity. We can't say particle, particle, particle. No, it's particle, 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 particle. It's making every, a particle every frame with, I would guess actually, because I just put it in the example, a 1% chance. How do we have something in processing happen with just 1% of the time? Look at this code. Now we haven't done all this stuff. All this stuff is going to be, we're going to get later, but we're looking at this line right here. If random one is less than 0.01, let's write that a different way. If random 100 is less than 10, here we're picking a random number between 0 and 100. How often will that random number be less than 10? 10% 10 of the time. Well, one, uh, or less than one, 1% 1 of the time. Well, we could also say random one less than 0 0.01. Same thing. So this is a way that we could just even begin to start to affect our random walker. We could actually, if we go look uh, over here again, we could see uh, here is our random walker uh, traditional, where we go down here and look. Here are the choices, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, or 3. Four options, equal probability each time. And if I go to this particular example, we can say, hey, what if that random number we pick, it's less than 0.4, go to the right. It's less than 0.6, go to the left. These are slightly different probabilities. 40% of going to the right, 20% going up, 20% going down, and 20% going, uh, going back to the left. And if I run this, we'll see what this random walker does. We can see it's, generally speaking, going to the right. Now, what effect, I don't know, <laughs> these are not some, well, first my head's in front of it. I'll just go stand over here. These are not earth-shattering examples. Ah, hello. These are not earth-shattering examples. Um, but these basics will get you started sort of understanding something about probability. Um, I don't want these videos to be too long, so I'm going to stop this one. And this is just sort of the basics of creating event probability and processing. And what could you do with that random walker? Could you get it to exhibit some type of pattern that has randomness built into it? What could you do that would be even, you know, that could get it to do something a little bit more, um, I don't know, that has a quality of something you're thinking of that I'm not thinking of? <laughs> or do you get a script? and a director to make up, and this will be much better. Um, so um, so that's, the, that's, that's the end of this one. And so uh, think about that, and we're going to look in the um, next couple video series about actually looking at Gaussian random numbers um, uh, and um, uh, Perlin noise, which I think will allow us to do quite a bit uh, more stuff. OK, um, I'm going to hit stop.